No, not yet. Uh, we're close. Um, you know, we're going to probably sign a guy, hopefully even before the game, um, you know, to a 10-day. I don't know if that re resolves it yet. So, um, you know, we're just going to keep looking around, and uh, we have some flexibility there, and so we're just going to keep doing it. No, no, it's not an either or. Uh, I just like him as a player, and I think he's out there. We should look at him, and I've always liked him. Um, you know, he can shoot, he can play three and four. Uh, so it's a position that we could use in some ways, and so um, you know, yeah, we're looking. How important is it these days, especially for only 14, 16 minutes a night, that a guy be a pure point? I mean, take a guy like Tedu, who handles as well as many points. Um, is is it essential that he? just be a pass first point guard or is the lead changed a little bit? I think the lead's changed. Um, you know, I don't know if there are a lot of pass. Uh, I talked to one today, Rondo. <laughs> you know, uh, other than that, there's not a, really a lot of pass. That was in, in some ways, even though Chris scores, he's he's more pass first uh, point guard, but there, there's just not a lot of those anymore. Um, I think because shooting has become so important uh, in our league, so I think that's changed a little bit uh, for sure. Um, and then in the backup row, I think it's even less, you know, because if you can't find a pure point as a starter, you know, the, the chance of you finding one to run your team is in the backup row. And that, that's one of the things where, you know, we're not necessarily looking for point guards, you know, right now. We're looking for guards, uh, you know, to, while Chris is out, we well, can go with three guards, you know, you, and whoever has it, has it, brings it up, and we can create a system. In that way, so we don't want to marry ourselves to one position in this search. Doc, how good college is and the NBA up until this point? Does Darren Collison have enough experience at the point guard position in his jacket to give you the confidence he can get you through this twenty game series? Yeah, he does. You know, and he's not the point. He's not the Chris type point guard. Uh, but Darren started uh, in Indiana. He's been in the league a long time. He knows how to play. Um, you know, he plays differently. He's a more aggressive scorer, you know, um, and we just got to make sure he has the right balance between that and making sure that, uh, especially with the starters, that the, the key guys are involved offensively uh, and that your team has a rhythm. And so I think that'll be important for him. Defensively, he clearly, uh, it's, it's, it's something that he can do easy. How long will this gap with Chris Apple? I don't know yet, honestly, uh, because I think with the starters, I don't think we have to change our style that much. You know, obviously we're going to do some things different because the bottom line is we're doing things that only Chris Paul could see. Uh, and, you know, very few guards can see the things that he can see, and so you're not going to get those. So you have to get it in a different way. I'm more concerned with how the second group will play. You know, um, let's say if we don't have a point guard but we have guards, we have to figure out a way to play that way. And so that's a bigger concern. Uh, Russell, did he do any more today? Did Were you not at uh, Shira this morning? We don't talk at Shira so I didn't show up. Oh wow, because guys were there. No, he shot. He, he's uh, I don't know how good he uh, looked, but were you there? I was. But he how did he look? Right. Okay, so there you go. <laughs> No uniforms for shoot around. It's practice jerseys. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, no, he looked okay. He, he, we didn't. Um, he's not shooting threes, you know. Yeah, there are not a lot of them. You know, you could see every shot he took. He made a point of taking it in the paint. So strength-wise, clearly. Uh, but I think he can. He'll get there. Uh, and I don't know how soon. You know, the cat, the fact that he's shooting is a good sign. And Reggie shot and, and went through shoot around today as well. So that was good as well. He's getting closer as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they're very close, both of them. But that doesn't mean they play Wednesday or Friday or um, when is it, Monday? Wednesday. Yeah. Wednesday. Next week. Yeah. Oh, wow, we got a good break. That's right. Um, so, but it means they're both close. So if you guys are... Yeah. 
I don't know yet. You know, uh, we're, that's why we're looking so hard because we have 10 days. You know, and the 10-day contracts are nice. You can kind of bring guys in and out and, and kind of evaluate. Doc, you mentioned the concern with the second unit and how they'll play. Going into tonight, what is your plan for who will handle the ball with that second unit tonight? Basically what we did uh, in San Antonio, um, you know, what it does, it forces you to take Jamal out early and then bring him back in and you try to put another ball handler on the floor with him so at least there's two guys uh, to, to handle the ball. And we're going to do the same thing. You know, I really should be concerned with the first unit, the way we've started the last four games. Uh, uh, defensively, we've been pretty bad, and we have to improve that. What do you see with this Magic Club, and what will you ask of your guys tonight? For this? Well, listen, they compete every night, and, and you see that. You know, they're, they've had a couple of wins and losses and up and down. They're in most games. Um, you know, I, I see a lot of young talent is what I see, and I see uh, they, they really, uh, for a young team, they really execute. Uh, well, especially out of timeouts, uh, Jock runs some really good stuff, and um, so you have to be ready to play him. Doc, um, just in the first half of the, the first part of this season, what have you seen it as a contribution with DeAndre on the defensive end that is so improved from last season? I don't know about last year, no, honestly. I just know like this year he's been fantastic. Um, I don't know if there's there's been a better guy in the league uh, overall every night. Um, Defensively than him, you know, and you know, it's it's funny for him and all of our players getting them to not worry about what their guy does and understand it's more the team scoring uh, that is more important. Uh, he's been the first guy to kind of do that uh, and buy into that. That's difficult, you know, if you're having your five run around the floor and his position may have 22 points, but the team only has 94 points and. He's, he, he's the reason, uh, but, you know, that's why, you know, trusting a system defensively is so important, and he's done that. Uh, kind of an off-topic question. <clears throat> a lot of point guards, in the, a lot of former point guards in this league are head coaches. How has, helped, how has that helped you, a former point guard, be a head coach? You know, I, I, it's a good question. I don't know. Um, I think because we probably have the most contact with the coach while we're playing, you know. Um, there's, you have a lot of meetings with coaches when you're a point guard. Some you don't really want to have, uh, but you tend to. You know, I had Mike Fratello, uh for my first eight years, and I felt like we were meeting a lot. Um, and you know, and the same thing with Coach Riley and Larry Brown. If you've been around Larry, you have a lot of meetings with Larry, um, and a lot of those you didn't want as well. But I think that's it. I really do. I think um, it's an extension of you on the floor. Uh, I think the coaches that I played with was the hardest on the point guards. I got a feeling I am too, um, and because that that that, that position is important, you got to call the plays uh, every time down. You got to defensively, you got to make sure everyone's in the right place. So uh, I think that's probably the reason. Uh, the, what, was the, what was the one thing that you liked about this guy that you're about to sign? I mean, are you looking for something in particular for them to bring? Yeah. No. Uh, yeah, I guess. I mean, I'm, it's, there's so many guys. Like, it's each guy has something different. One guy is a great shooter, you know, and so, man, that's interesting. One guy is big and can defend, and that's interesting. And so, at the end of the day, I think you're just going to look at which guy you think can help you right now. And so that's basically it. We haven't had a chance to talk to Chris yet. Since the I think you talked to him today, right? Yeah. Um, what, what have your conversations been? He took it hard, you know, he should. He's a competitor. Um, so I love him, you know, he's emotional. I love emotional guys. Uh, I mean, and, and he took it that way. Um, you know, um, he's taking it okay, you know. Um, what I, The one thing I told him is that we can't get this injury back. It's happened. And uh, let's try to look at this as a blessing that you're going to have uh, fresh, great legs for the stretch run. You know, that's the only way you can look at it uh, because there's no other way to look at it. Now, can he do anything at all to stay in condition? You know, I don't know. That's a tough one. Um, I, I'm going to guess that's going to be hard early because the more movement, you know, can't be good for your shoulder. So um, that's why whenever you hear four weeks, five weeks, or six weeks, that could be true, but we don't, you know, with conditioning, you know, it's just, it's just a tough injury and you don't know. 
My guess is after about three weeks, he probably can start doing conditioning, but I don't know. Well, considering he's your point guard, MRI results, were, were you relieved? Was it kind of what you expected? What I was relieved because it was, you know, it could have gone the other way, you know, with those shoulders. You know, we had, uh, I think it was Perkins in Boston, uh, had it twice, I think. And, uh, you know, you don't know the x ray, and you go in there, and all of a sudden they say it's needs surgery, and then. Then you're, you're, he's out, you know. So for, fortunately for us, he didn't need that. What's his role now that he's out for you? Since you, you know. Well, I, the other thing I told him is we're going to have him coach a little bit uh, the, the guards, you know, uh, and you know that'll be good for him to stay involved as well. His will to win is pretty much unmatched in this league. How much of that element are you going to miss? In the oh, you're going to miss it, you know. Him, um, we've missed JJ. JJ's one of the more competitive guys on our team as well. And, you know, those are the low intangibles that people don't see. Like, clearly, you miss JJ's shot. Uh, we even miss JJ's drive and his, his, his mean toughness. And now the other guy is Chris, and we're not going to have that. So, uh, those are the intangibles uh, besides the play when you lose a Chris Ball or JJ Reddick um, that you don't have. This has been way too long, guys. <laughs> All right. I mean, I love you guys, but goodbye.